Gavin, are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Gavin, how are you doing? Yes, thank you very much. Good, 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 good. Uh, all right. So the Spanish Inquisition begins. <laughs> <laughs> so, trading. Tell me, uh, tell me what you got. What got you uh, interested in it in the first place? Apart from the obvious. What got me interested in the first place? Probably the challenge of it. Um, because yeah. I knew that. I knew the failure rate was very high. The obvious reasons are convenience and working from home and all those things and making as much money as possible, obviously. Yeah, yeah, they're the obvious ones, yeah. Yeah, and then once you get into it, I think I think the challenge the challenge probably keeps you going. Yeah. I think I think that having a, a grail at the end of it um, keeps you going and keeps you motivated to keep going. If your motivation is high enough in the first instance, yes. Did, did you so just on the motivation question did you think you had the motivation like is there any characteristics that you had in your normal life let's say pre pre trading that, that gave any indication that you you were up for it you had the, the mental toughness to uh, continue no matter what happened characteristics well I've, I've always been I've always been quite sporty so I would have got some discipline from that yeah um, sure generally um studying um i was someone that that um packed in work in my mid-20s and went to university and didn't really have a clue whether i was broke enough <laughs> um and went through the whole degree program obviously and came out successful at the other end um yeah. and it was a big that was something that i i took on um as i say without without a huge amount of confidence but certainly a, um some a certain amount of stubbornness to succeed anyway right and, and, and that's a quality you think people um need to have or do you think it can be developed as if, if someone maybe lacks a little bit of that or um i think we need to have um i think you need to have a lot of a lot of i wouldn't use the word stubbornness although i think that probably happens as you're going along yeah, yeah. Um, i think i've become more stubborn and more determined the longer I've been at it, but I got to the stage where um, I knew I needed help, yeah. um, and I found it. Cool. So we'll get to that um, in a little bit, if uh, if we may. Um, I was just I just wanted to go back to um, a, a, an earlier uh, point you made. Um, do, do you, well, actually, let me let me ask you this. So. Um, you're in a you're in a, a a pretty unique position, and I wanted to I wanted to document this in in particular um, because am I right in saying you are now in a position where you feel confident in your process and that you're actually starting to make the um, the the returns in terms of pips and consistency that you'd you'd always knew was possible, but kind of you you know you you you, you went through. Um, that process not 100 percent certain whether or not it would actually lead somewhere you're in a very unique position which I've, i really wanted to document so talk to me a little bit about that um yeah i think i am in that position um, um if you were to draw it on a graph i suppose you would draw it as a as a, um, a slow decline followed by a leveling off uh, yeah. and followed by um, what is now an ascent, if you like. Yeah. Um, in the last two or three months, my account has started to climb, and it's been consistent. Yeah. Um, I've had one or two blips, um, which I've had to consult my mentor with. <laughs> Who's your mentor? <laughs> Just <kidding. laughs> um, But I've yeah. Um, what I've what I've had is uh, um, I've had um. Uh, when I make a mistake, I've had things pointed out to me, um, and um, because they've been pointed out to me in a in a in a one um, in a slow manner, let's say, I haven't had loads thrown at me at the same time. Yeah. Um, and each, and that, each time, yeah, go on. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to say on that because that's a massive problem for everyone because the, there is so much information out there. I, I liken it to. Um, uh, in another life whether you people know this or not but i was a, a, a property real estate investor and there, there are only a handful of ways that you can buy 
cheaper property below market value property i, I used to um, find deals myself and I used to do advertising to do that uh, that's one way you could do it you can be in uh, in bed with a, a real to real estate agent or maybe even start your own um, estate agency uh, probate things like that uh, auctions not really so much but but, but fixer upper is that type of thing what you can master one of those areas and and once you do do that it's not that difficult you can you're kind of aware whereas in trading that's not that's not really the case is it because there's so there are so many different avenues in which you can go down there's so many shiny things there's so many different teachers and mentors and strategies and con like it's very difficult to consume that and try and understand where you were where you are so would you would you say that that, that making it more simple and just dealing with each is, is, issue as, as they come up has been massively helpful yeah well to go to go back a bit further um yeah i was i was instructed by you to um go away and after i'd had some tuition misses go away and and as close to master um several areas yeah um as best as i possibly could yeah and then from that point i i was able to trade more confidently because I was then able to look at the chart and see things which were up and coming or that were likely barriers in my way, if you like, likely like the areas on the chart which were likely to trip me up. Right. Um, without doing that, um, one of those things, of course, was learning candlesticks. Um, yeah. Without doing that, um, I wouldn't have been able. I wouldn't have a chance. Um, so what you say so what you're saying is just to clarify that a bit so the, so you're looking at a chart and we you you'd have a problem with a certain particular scenario on a chart we'd quickly jump on a call together discuss it give you the answer and then you you took that on board learnt that that's that, that that representation if you will you had an understanding of it for next time it occurs if then you could you do x y or z and just build up that whole hard right edge kind of understanding would you is that what you're essentially saying yeah so that that last point which i was i, I should have which i was meant to address was was um the was was the slow correction of of um of um of faults if you like or of of uh, yeah. missing knowledge that i had yeah uh, if you if you take if i'm taking in one or maximum say two points at a time and I've got yeah. opportunity to go away and think about that before the next time I take a trade that gradual addition of knowledge on top of quite an quite an extensive amount of knowledge which I already have uh, has just made me better it's just made me that little bit better so I'm able to reject some trades on the basis of things I see now which I wasn't even two months ago so talk, talk to me about that extensive um, extensive knowledge and just that, that what seems to, to me like what you're saying is that layering of new information um, and then that quality learning and that execution of that new information. Is that how you see the trading journey for most people? You've got to be, you've got to go through that and it's really just experience that then comes back and kicks in when you're actually in the heat of a trade and it's like oh i, I know what to do here or, i've seen this before is that is that essentially how you feel about uh, your your own growth um last that's, that's quite a long that's quite a long question i'm trying to think exactly what you're asking me now <laughs> yeah so so basically like all of that information that you've 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 sort of done the grunt work that you know yeah. the results weren't there you yeah. had to bite down the gum shield but all of that experience today is when you're at the hard right edge pulling the trigger yes it's like i've, I've seen this before i i know what this looks like this is what i should do under those circumstances i'm just wondering do you think that's like super valuable to you basically in how you trade today yeah um yes um if i if i if i sort of retrace back to where i where i began i mean i began probably like most people by um thinking that you you could go online and learn a system um okay. and, and tell not, me what's wrong tell me what's wrong with that um well the one of the things that you taught me was that that it's the the, the trading is a is a long uh, is a numbers game 
yeah. and um, and therefore if you if you if you learn a, a, a system which which many people online will provide um, quite easily um, and you have a number of um, losing trades on the trot psychologically it's very difficult to handle that for most people um, it's not natural. <coughs> sorry it's not natural is it no so so uh, um, a, a beginning trader I mean, um, even three or four losses on the trot would make you look at something and think, well, that just doesn't work. Um, yeah. And and many people online will say, um, well, the process now is on to the next one, and then it's on to the next one, and then it's on to the next one. And even if you have a couple of wins, if you follow that with four or five losses on the trot, you're looking at that, at that trading system in the same way. So that is why yeah. it doesn't work. You have to understand... Um, first, you have to learn something that that you that you understand and can execute very well, and you also have to understand that within your wins and losses, you're capable of having runs of losses, just as you're capable of having runs of wins. And it's about it's about how much money you take when you win, compared to how much money you lose when you lose. And what would you say is different about the way that you think about losing? Um... So for, for, for full uh, disclosure, Gavin, Gavin's uh, one of my students. <laughs> is uh, like how is that? What how did how did training with me change your perception of losing? Um, I, I I had to get I had to get to a point um, uh, which I now think I'm at um, where I could I could trade. Um, um, with minimal mistakes um, and and see a run of results and how they relate to each other so if I've taken if I've taken 20 trades I need to be able to look at those 20 trades and, and uh, or the preference would be to look at those 20 trades and understand within those 20 trades you're going to take um, six or seven losses um, probably minimum um, and therefore that you're, you're understanding the context in which those losses occur. Um, so you can then see what you've made when you've won, what you've lost when you've lost, um, and then um, you, can, you can psychologically handle the losses more easily going forward. Um, have I, has that answered your question? Yeah, and, and, and I'll just ask a, a, a further question. So how how how's your emotional response changed, though? So we get the, the logic side of it, and you've been able to rationalize that. What's changed emotionally-wise? Are, are you as charged as you were when you, you know, during the course of your journey from, you know, even in the beginning versus now? What what are the differences? Uh, well, I, rem I remember, actually, um, when I began, um, I, me I remember being... Uh, well and truly told to get on with it by yourself. <laughs> and, um, that doesn't sound like me. <laughs> and um, and I was very apprehensive. Um, um, it is difficult um, because I did dem demo a trade for a long time, um, and it is difficult shifting from from fake money to real. Um, once I'd done a few trades, um, or if I if I recount now, now when I'm trading, um, I don't feel a great deal of tension. There are moments when you when you feel um, when you feel a little bit, um, and I've been I've been instructed by yourself to be aware of that, um, and I am. And what 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 do you do when you experience it? Like what happens? Um, well. At the moment, I just remind myself I've been here before. I'll be here again, um, and and just to not pay any attention. That is that is the objective. So you essentially. So what? So what you're saying is you're in the trade. You've you've somehow through a, a process of um, you know experience going live. So the fears dropped a little bit um, after after a while. But now what you're saying is that 
you're still feeling these things but on a on a, on a maybe a turned down volume in terms of your emotions of it That'll and be. in that moment you're giving yourself some new information to essentially grow again right yeah one of the things that's changed most recently is, has been um being able to go to bed and sleep um easily right. Um, right. at the start I, I i put a computer next to my bed um <laughs> and I, and I, had the, I had the alarm, I had the klaxon thing um, set to go off should the price hit danger levels. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, I have my stop in place when I go to bed. I turn the computer off um, and I just pay no attention. And, what, and someone might say, well, hang on, why, you know, because we see it all the time, people in trades, maybe on YouTube and things, and they're, f they're freaked out to pieces about the position. Why Why do you think you're not doing that? Um, because I because I understand it's a long-term thing. That's because, profound. So, okay, C carry on. Yeah, because I because I understand that we're not, that the, 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 the that particular trade, the next two or three trades, the next four or five trades, um, really doesn't mean a great deal. It's the next 40, 50, 60 trades. Um, That's awesome. That's happening. Because most people's experience is they get so drawn into the, the, the current activity. It's like the bright lights of it. It draws them in, doesn't it? And that's where that frustration or, or anxiousness comes from. But what you're saying is you're taking yourself out of that kind of single event and, and the and, and and the emotions that are surrounding him because you realize that the that you the, that you're not going to know whether or not you're profitable or not on this one singular trade in this one day in history it's going to take a lot more to get there Ooh. i think that's a massive issue that people um people face so that's un unbelievable so you've you've got there through what um i i I, I suppose the answer is um, I've got to a point. Um, if I'm not answering the question here, let me know. If I've got I've got to a point where I can I can select good trades usually, um, and I can see that I'm profitable over a period of time. Um, you know, be it only two or three months, um, and. And therefore, I can I can start to look at it longer term like that. If if you're someone that's that's um, uh, losing slightly more than you're winning, or your or your account is staying pretty much static, you haven't got that much much further to go. But you need to do a little bit of work. <laughs> once you get once you get into a position where where you can you can look back at a record over a period of time. And you can and you can and you can see on the chart with some confidence that that's the trade to take. Yeah. Um, then you're in business. Yeah. And and you would I'm sure you concur that it's like it's that knowledge though as well of of realizing that's how the game's played, right? Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that is probably the single most important thing understanding that it's a long-term business not um a month and five ten trades what would you say to yourself um if you were starting out from scratch what advice would you give yourself um i'd say <coughs> i think what i'd say is to to find yourself a good teacher straight away. Um, I kind of knew I was going to be asked this question because it's an obvious one. <laughs> um, one. The answer I was going to give was learn how to do everything wrong before you learn how to do everything right. But, it, it, but the only way of doing that, I can see, is, is to spend um, um, a lot of committed um, continuous time doing that, not like I did, which was in bits and pieces over many years, um, before I finally decided to look for help. Um, I would go to some... How much time would you have saved yourself, by the way? If, if... 
Um, it's difficult to say whether I would have, I would have probably saved myself 75% of the time that I've taken, I should think. Maybe more. It's considerable. But, yeah, may, maybe more, but I should say that that's a conservative estimate because the, because of trying to um, master the different disciplines as well as, as, as well as being taught on top. Um, and then you've, you've got to test what, test yourself, preferably on demo, I would say. Um, I know so you think demo is a good idea? Um, I, I would say if, if you're a very disciplined individual and you, can, and you can treat demo as close to real as possible, in other words, you, are, you seek to protect your money, um, I would say it probably is. Some people say it, 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 it isn't. But to me, if, if you haven't done all the work and been taught very well, you shouldn't be going live. Yeah, that's a great point. Because there's a, the, I've got a, a couple of things to say on that. The, 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 the demo, the sim, simulator, etc. If, as you quite rightly point out, if it's, if it's used in a professional way that you're going to, you know, it's no use taking multi ten uh, million dollar trades right um when you've got a thousand dollars to trade with you've got to take it seriously and use it as a tool which it was intended but the problem is as with all of trading you've got that free will and people just don't treat it that way yeah. um and the other part to it, which i think is a critical part to it, which i'm kind of um focusing on at the moment is this whole idea of people coming from brand new they open a trading account with a new broker and they just go hell for leather and, and really hurt themselves uh, financially in, in, in many, many occasions. Goodness knows to what extent in some cases. I've heard some um, severe horror stories. And, and for if even for that reason alone, you should embrace that idea because you need to try and, you need to try and reduce the risk of that occurring. I think that's basically what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the analogy would be going in a, going into battle without a sword. I mean, don't just don't take on the, the forex markets, the currency markets, um, unless you're very confident that you've mastered or close to mastered anyway um, a number of the um, most popular disciplines or most popular methodologies. Um, before you do before, before you do so you got to master your craft is what you're saying before you you got to at least attempt to try and master your craft before you start putting some serious money on the line yep. yeah um talk, talk to me about the the progression of that then let's just think about that a little more so you you've got this strategy um you feel confident in it you feel comfortable in it we can maybe explore why you might feel that um but that's just the first part, right? Would you agree in, ter in terms of like the setup is just the it's just the beginning of the learning process? Yeah. Do, do you mean the the um the uh, uh, initial analysis? Yeah. So the initial setup of a trade, whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're taking the trade, but really the setup is a big deal, obviously. But there's a lot more. Yeah. to the trade itself in terms of the overall experience and the process and things that can happen talk to me a little bit how how you deal with so you've got the setup talk to me how you deal with becoming better at being involved in the trade and and being able to stick to a stop loss and being able to stick to targets and the cut and thrust what do you what's your process for that um i i i have three um entry methods that i use um, Why three? Well, at the moment... At the Hang on, just before we get there, sorry to interrupt you. Most people think it's just one trigger and you can rely on one entry. Surely that's that's the way. Um, well, the, answer, the, the short answer is no to me. Um, what, I, what I've done is I've... What I did after being taught, because of course you can't teach me everything, um, is, is to go is to go back and look at the setups and look at the most likely ways of getting myself in safely. Yeah. 
Um, I think I believe I did Huxley Point is from you anyway. I'm sure I did at some point. But I've 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 had to look over a number of Souths myself and to look for the safest um, safest, most likely um, good entries um, before I put my money on the line. Yeah, so it gives you and it gives you some options, right? Because it's not yeah. it's not a perfect environment we're in and that's what a lot of people fail to recognize it's not perfect and if you just say well my entry is going to be an engulfing candle or it's going to be this two candle three candle entry pattern yeah. well it's it may not be there but your setup might be there yeah so what do you do then just sit on the sidelines or do you do you have multiple options and this is a big big problem for for people in the retail space they're not willing to exp uh, accept it's not a perfect environment we're in yeah. So we've got to have options. Yeah, as I say, I've got I've got three standard ones which I use. Um, and but you I, probably open them more, I would I would guess. Yeah, and, and I I will look on top of that as well. So I will look for a standard cow, uh, candlestick pan as well. If if yeah. if my other entries are not there, yeah. if if the if the overall setup is good. Um, after that. When the money's live on the line, you've got yeah. Your... So talk to me about uh, talk to me about that. Then let's go back to that. What do you what What is it that like that's that's the taking the entry is a obviously taking the setup is a big thing, but really the work begins once you're in. Yeah. Talk to me how you deal with that. You mean psychologically? Yeah, psychologically, mechanically. Um, well, I've been I've been taught um, that. Um, I'm trying to think how you phrased it to me before. Um, except, I think something like once your money is is at risk, you you are, you let it go. Not obviously in terms of your management of trade because you manage your trade, but psychologically you let it go. So you're ex you're accepting straight away that you could lose it, and you must. And most people don't. And most people don't. No. Once you... from there if you if you don't sorry sorry man if, if 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 i'll just say from there if you don't this is where revenge trading comes from yeah. averaging into positions comes from system hopping comes from blowing accounts comes from that's literally where the nub of where that all those trading dreads occur yeah well i i i have revenge traded many years ago yeah we've all done it and i and i do remember I do remember the feeling that I had when I when I lost the money and went back in. Um, if I lose now, the only the only reason I'm I'm annoyed is if I've made a mistake. I don't get annoyed because I've lost the money. That's awesome. So just touch on that a little more then. So you said earlier you said you still make small mistakes. Yeah, yeah. But I would posit that they're not career ending, right? Uh, not as far as I can tell, no. <laughs> yeah, right. So far, so good. <laughs> so yeah. So carry on with that. Then talk to me about what you just said. Um, making making small mistakes. Um, yeah. Well, what did I do the other day? Oh, um, I I took an entry um, when it was more likely that the that the position would sell off in the opposite direction the other day. And you pointed it out because I asked you the question. Yeah. Um, you probably get asked a few questions, so you might have forgotten that one. But I, I, I had I, I entered the trade, and you said to me, "Wouldn't it be more likely that it would sell off there?" And I looked at it and I thought, well, "It hasn't sold off previously." So yes, of course, it is likely to sell off there. I now have it in my mind. I now have it in my mind that if I haven't seen that in my setup. Um, I'm looking for it to happen unless the the level that I'm trading has been absolutely nailed. Um, if it's 50-50, I'm looking for it to go, I'm looking for it to sell off or buy whichever whichever um, type of trade I'm taking. Um, and it was a marginal thing, but it is an, it is something that I will now see, and I do now see when I'm when I'm taking trades. So I'm able to stay out 
now, whereas I wasn't before, and that's just one small thing which I've added to my armour, if you like. Yeah. That's that layering we, we talked about earlier, right? It's like, you don't know what you don't know until until it happens, and then you put it in your arsenal, and then the next time it presents itself, you're much more capable of, of, um, of dealing with it. Yeah. Well, I've, I've already, I've rejected a trade this week already, which has gone the other direction. And I would have ended so it for a month ago. You'd have entered it. So talk to me about that. Talk to me about rejecting a trade. What's the importance of that in your mind? Right. <clears throat> um, there's a number of aspects to the setup that you're going to take. Um, uh, the, because most people's challenge is they want to, they want to be active. They want to take yeah. every trade, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Why is rejecting a trade? Like, what, what are the benefits to it? What? Right, because you've got you've got a number of you've got a number of um, um, trades which on on first look can appear quite similar. Yeah, this is super key. Keep going, yeah. <laughs> so you continue your analysis, and then you and then you filter out one or two based on your knowledge. Um, you then end up with what was originally five or six possibles. You let you might yeah. end up with two left. So let's so let's just just analyze that. So you've got six setups, yeah. five or six setups. They all look aesthetically similar. Yeah. Why are you trying to hunt out the the if there is such a thing at the the better traits and then to slim it down? What's what's why? Um, because it in, well it increase increases your probability of being successful on that on that individual trade so your win rate it, should grow because because you're essentially trying to, there's a like a quality element to a trade is that what you're saying so there's yeah. a you're improving the selection of the trade yeah so you're rejecting it to increase your probability yeah which is totally counterintuitive to what most people would do if you if you agree with that well, that that part of things requires a lot. Of, um, probably, I say I was going to say a lot of patience. I don't particularly feel it does take patience now. But I think I think three or four months ago that would have been the answer I'd have given. Yeah, that's uh, really interesting. Why would you say it's not patience? Um, <clears throat> because now I just understand that's the way it is. Right. So it isn't frustrating. So, that, so there's not trades every two minutes that you can take, even if they aesthetically seem like there is. <coughs> no, I mean, for, for example, now I've, I'm looking at about half a dozen, and one of them <coughs> really um, is 50-50 at best. Um, two of them are, are strong possibles. Um, the others I haven't decided yet. Can, can we explore that though? So, so what the fifty-fifty? What may, Why are they not as appealing as the others? <coughs> um, in your mind, in, you know, um, just because of um, the the ideas that I've the ideas I've learned and the extra pieces of information on top of that learning that I've been given slowly over time um, and experience on top. Has taught yeah. me that has ta has made me more able to be selective um, because I can see more detail than I could. Right. Um, yeah, I can pick out little bits of detail which which add um, weight to a possible trade, or indeed have the reverse effect and make me want to reject it. Right. Okay. That's interesting. So a trade can make you want to take it versus one that you, you, you're, um, you're not quite sure about. And I've been exploring this with a, um, a few people recently and, and talking about it. I want to take a trade where I am literally gagging to enter. Yeah. Like how on earth do I get in this trade? This is a trade I want to be involved in. Yeah. Versus another one where the aesthetically, as, as we've just said, looks similar, 
so it could be on your watch list or whatever and then it starts to sort of work out as you would anticipate it again this is you know through the experience those mental reps of what happens next and it what happens next just isn't it just doesn't seem to be quite right there's the the, the movement is slow and ponderous and it's not quite what you'd expect yeah. the setup seems fine but these are like these key nuances right it's like i want to be gagging to enter like how do i get in and those are the the trades so it's like it's just that it's just that nuance that's super powerful and helping to uh, elevate the the um, quality of the trade yeah. ultimately to, oh, that's fascinating interesting <laughs> so tell me what the what's the day job of the trader like what is the focus for you <clears throat> um what is the focus um <coughs> I, all, all I do is, it, I, is it on making money is it like what's the day to day focus is it on making money i suppose it is um <laughs> um I mean, I haven't even I haven't taken a trade this week, so that would tell you that all I've done this week is update my charts and understand where things are at. Um, but you got. But we should clarify: you're going for hundreds of pips when you're taking trades, right? So we're not just going for nickels and dimes. Oh no, no, exactly. So we're not. Yeah, I'm not scalping or anything like that. I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking to be in the trade once I'm in it. Anything from a week to a month. Yeah. Um, so, so I know that I can sit here patiently and wait for those, wait for those things to happen, and then manage the trade. While I'm managing the trade, let's say I've got two or three running, I'm, I'm earnestly looking for more. Yeah. Um, but unless I'm very, very confident about being able to manage more, I'm not going to take on any more beyond that. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I'm in a position to take more if I close out one of the ones I've got got running and I, I'm cycling what I do. Okay. Talk, talk to me about the differences then, in your opinion, uh, in terms of those lower time compressions versus the higher ups, the four hours, the dailies, etc. Um, well, there's much more noise on the lower time frames, obviously. Um, much more volatility. Um, Faster moving, as it, it would seem, as it, if you look, if you staring at a fifteen minute candle compared to a four hour, obviously, clearly, yeah. um, the moves are less reliable, definitely less reliable, um, and you 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 can be fairly sure that that the bigger institutions are looking at the higher time frame. So why would you look at the lower ones? And the reason being, the inference there is that the trade in such high volume that you they can't just jump in and out in two seconds flat it's got to be a a more uh, a larger time frame and uh, so they can um, build into the position and also hold the position to unwind it yeah because they're in several months of course yeah yeah okay so if if someone's struggling listening to this and they're trying to day trade the life out of whatever market you know we're talking about forex it can be anything what what would your advice be to them in terms of that individual trying to make that work um i i, I hope i'm not going to repeat the same answer um I, I the first thing i do is get a bloody good teacher um and understand or, or make sure if you're not going to get a good teacher make sure that you understand how to manage risk and that it's a very long term that it's a long term thing not not um, something yeah, yeah. make make yourself a millionaire in 6 months but what what just so just to um, clarify a little bit what what i was saying was um like if someone's struggling to make money yeah, and they're trying to day, they're trying to day trade the life out of the markets. What specific advice would you give to to those people? So yeah, get a mentor, etc. But would you tell them to keep focusing on the lower time frames or, or something else? Um, 
I, I, I wouldn't look at the lower time frames at all. Um, and apart from for micromanaging trades when I'm already in them. Right. Um, for actual setups, I wouldn't look down there at all. Yeah. Um, nothing lower. I've been I've been advised nothing lower than four hour. Someone who was really very very good might risk an hour, but I wouldn't go any lower than four hour. Yeah, and, and well, we should say at this point that there are people out there who are making that work. Yeah. Right. There are there are it's Darwinian in that sense. This this industry that there's always going to be someone bigger, stronger, gets all the men, gets all the women. Right. Yeah. It's is like that. It is like a super anomaly for whatever reason. And and that's uh, that's where where they are, but it's very very difficult. It's very very difficult. So while on the face of it, it seems like a great idea to do a bit of trading first thing within half an hour, close your screens and off to the beach drinking uh, martinis. The the reality is hardly anyone is doing that. And if you want to increase the probability of you actually achieving success in trading the the higher compressions is where that is most likely yeah and to take levels levels of playing field right yeah and to take your question a bit further even even once you've got profitable um you can't stop learning hmm. where well, you shouldn't uh, yeah i mean that's a super interesting uh, point you made because we, we, i liken it to uh being in a swimming pool with a it's not a good idea by the way so no one do this but being in a swimming pool one arm tied behind your back yes. trying to grasp a big beach ball in the pool yeah. it's always you're just always knocking it forward and you are moving towards it but there's no way you're going to grab it mastery is probably not like complete and utter mastery is probably not possible no would you agree with that, or would you? Uh, I, well, mastery, mastery. Um, I don't know the exact definition of mastery. Definition of it, right? You would guess it would be something like having a hundred percent win rate, or close to. Yeah. Um, so let's say, for argument's sake, let's say mastery is ninety percent win rate. Yeah. If we if we want to use that term, which I know is not a very good one, but. Um, so nine out of ten trades that you take on win would make you a master trader. Well, yeah, it certainly was. Yeah. Well, I, I I would say that's that's next to impossible. Mm -hmm. um, a master trader is someone that understands it's a numbers game and makes a lot more money than they lose. Yeah. Um, and it, and is constantly striving and on the edges, pushing the edges of trying to achieve mastery. Yes, like uh, trying to gra trying to grab the ball right in the pool. Yeah. Being humble and having a look at where your weaknesses are is a big big deal. Absolutely. And then focusing in those areas, right? Yeah. I mean, when I make money, I, I don't in any way get excited or up, up in the air about that. That's awesome. Nor do I get particularly depressed and down if I've lost it. You must not do that. Um, no, I just shut the computer and wait for the next trade. That's what you've got to do. Be like a be like a ice cold assassin, if you like. <laughs> um, I wasn't. I didn't used to be like that. So, so I, I don't mean to sit here and it sounds like I'm bragging. I definitely was not not like that naturally. No, no, none of us were, no. So I've just become um, more or less unemotional when I try it now. Yeah. And, and you, there's nothing that can prepare you for that other than going through the, the going through it and, and experiencing it and making sure that you don't massively, massively make a mistake um, that kind of prematurely ends your career. Yeah. Going to There's bed. no point, like literally. Sorry, mate, go on. I mean, going to bed initially, I'm going to bed and, um, hang on, I think that's my clacks and I'll just turn it off. Mm -hmm. Going to bed um, used to make me stressed, but if you if you have a, a, a patch where you, um, or if you have a run of trades, let's say, where you, you wake 
get up in the morning and if you lost the odd one, but basically over time you've made quite a decent amount of money, why would you go a bit worried about it? That's because there's a there's a lot of traders that don't even like holding positions over a weekend, and obviously if you're swing trading those higher compressions, you've you've got to that's one of the things you've got to get used to. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah, I've, I've, I've had that patch. I had a patch a while. I'll, I'll give you an example. Actually, I had a patch a while. Uh, I, I had a, a moment a while back where um, it was just before a bank holiday. I think it was. It might even been Easter. And um, I had a trade running on the Thursday, and of course it's Good Friday and bank holiday Monday to follow. And um, yeah. it was in Dolly M. And um, my, my my trade management wasn't as good then as it is now. Admittedly. But had I had I just let it go, if you like, in, uh, psychologically, and said to myself, well, I can just hold this trade um, through Good Friday and through Bank Holiday Monday, and come back on Tuesday and continue to manage it. And if I've lost it, I've lost it. Had I done that, I would have made four or five times my original risk compared to what I actually made, which is more like <laughs> one half to one. So it's those moments which teach you. Just to, let them up, just to let it go because yeah sure yeah. you might lose a couple but the next time you might make six to one out of that yeah yeah and that more that's a big deal again again it's people it's people yeah sorry to cut you off it's, it does make it does more than make up for it um but people struggle to get out of that <laughs> being super focused in that one that one trade so it's very difficult for people to see um beyond it yeah, and that's where that's where being taught trade management comes in. Yeah. Um, the 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 least expectation you're looking for that you've taught me um, originally was was two to one. Um, so if you if you find yourself in a position where you're close to two to one. And, and, and we're going away for bank holiday. Bank holiday is coming in the following, the following, um, the following day. Um, you've not managed to move your stock through your normal trade management. Yeah. What do you do? Do you, do you take the money, or do you do you just patiently wait to let the numbers? It feels good to take the money. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It feels good to take the money to to to. Um, to complete your account, so to speak, for, the, for, that, for that week or that month. Yeah. But if you then come back on, on the Monday and, and, and all you had to do was leave the trade, manage it in your normal manner, and this is the thing, to get used to a routine of managing things in a, in a, sta in, in a normal mechanized way, you come back on that Monday and you're four to one on the trade still running, what are you thinking then, you see? That's why you've got. So that's, that's super. Yeah, that's sorry, mate. Go on. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. That's why you've got to have a way of a way of trade managing, which is which you can which you understand well and you can follow mechanically, and therefore the emotion is is removed. Okay. Um, you you make a very important point there. So <clears throat> you're saying. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but you're essentially saying that we are the problem. We're, we're the ones who are foisting ourselves on a situation that if we'd have just left it well enough alone, but it's the price action that is driving us to act. Yeah. And, and if, if we only were to recognize that we're being driven by some prices bouncing up and down our charts rather than the logic of the situation rather than the reality of the price action yeah. it's kind of like um you know you're in a trade you take an entry it just flies your way right and i'm in a uh, new zealand yen trade at the moment it's, it's literally just done that yeah so up 100 150 pips but targets like 300 plus yeah I'm going to have a retracement. The retracement is coming. Yeah, it's definitely due looking at the chart. Yeah, look at the chart. It's like six or seven daily candles, maybe, or maybe four, four hour candles, I forget. But there's no, there's been zero retracement. So, so the retracement is coming. 
and this is now the moment where I'm going to potentially driven by price I'm going to potentially interfere with that process yeah now I'm not obviously right but this is the mo these are the key moments in which we're all at risk interesting so do you think anybody can learn to trade um i i can't see i can't see why not that i mean there are people that will look at a chart or a graph and will switch off in a moment okay sorry let, let me let me frame that slightly differently is it possible for anyone to learn to trade who has a basic interest in yeah. or, a, or, a, or a vehement interest in trading well, I would say if you've seen charts and they didn't frighten you off in the first instance, then definitely. But even if even if they do frighten you initially, provided you're open-minded, I would say, yes, anybody can. Anybody can. Yeah. Well, on that note, there's not much else to say. Gavin, thank you very much for your time. I loved, uh, loved speaking to you today. Thank you very much for your insights. I'm absolutely certain uh, many people will find that uh, extremely valuable. And if you want to plug my, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Take care, mate. Uh, thanks very much. No worries. Thanks, Mark. Bye.